Will the South African RAND be able to sustain its recent gains? In this morning's video, we share with you a short clipping from an interactive webinar with Dr. Franz Krenier and Beggy Mashlobo from the CRA. They discuss the domestic as well as global trends which will determine South Africa's economic performance from 2021 and beyond. If you are a CRA client, you can access the full recording of the session on our website. From jobs to the currency, what do we think is going to happen here? Here our analysis becomes interesting and slightly more complex because there is a three-part case to be made that despite everything you've heard to this point, the RAND can hold its current levels or in fact strengthen further into, and critically here, into the short term. That's a 12-month view. Those three reasons are one, risk on sentiment. Should the global recovery persist? will reduce demand for dollars, uh, and as a consequence, the dollar itself, the safe haven of the dollar is no longer as in demand as it would have been during the, the crisis of March and April, the pandemic crisis. The dollar weakens as a consequence, and uh, that will uh, lend some support to the RAND. Continued global recovery, the second point, plus a Western government uh, sort of uh, infrastructure approach as its next phase of stimulus, will support commodity prices, which are a traditional driver of RAND strength. That holds the RAND up further. And third, you know what that is? That's the yield question. Interest rates around the world remain low, certainly into the short term, perhaps into the medium term. That means South Africa remains a rare outpost of yield, which will show up the RAND. Now, critical risk here is that despite that and the likely outlook for a little bit more RAND strength, none of it is because of South Africa's own fundamentals. And hence, in the medium or longer term, our call as a team of analysts is for the currency to weaken further. So a bit of a roller coaster expected on the currency. What do the data charts uh, show us that we draw, draw this view out of? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's December of 2019 is where this chart starts into a couple of days ago. That is the US dollar index. It's an index of the strength of the dollar. If it rises, the dollar gets stronger. If it weakens, the, the, if, if it falls, the dollar is getting weaker. There's less demand for dollars. It's a typical indicator of risk on sentiment. Look how the dollar strengthened sharply into the crisis of the, of the pandemic and how as that began to ease, the global economy began to recover, how the dollar weakened sharply and continues on a, on a gentle a weakening track. Over that, the iron ore price, just as one commodity indicator, again, it's the risk on uh, uh, effect. And you see the, the price pick up from its March, April lows. It's now way above uh, levels even of, of January of this year, both collective. It's a double whammy effect for RAND strength. That's why you've seen the currency strengthen so much over the past month or so. Uh, the yield differential is this next chart. It's 1994 January out into a couple of days ago. And what we're measuring here is the difference in, the, in, in, in interest rates between 10-year uh, uh, bonds in America, a safe haven of uh, you, you by, by reputation, and those in South Africa. And that differential, it's how much more do you pay in South Africa than you would pay in the U.S.? Look how that differential reduced after 94, as the South African uh, uh, democratic experiment became uh, quite successful. The risk premium on South Africa reduced as a consequence. The economy was recovering. The yield differential is a measure of risk. It rose a bit in, in, into the financial crisis in the era of Mr. Zuma. Now it's escalating particularly quickly. And that will continue to drive some demand for rands in the yield-free world, shore up the currency a little bit further. But into the medium and longer term, the, the, the position changes. What we've done in this chart, it starts in, in July of 2016, and it uh, goes through into, into the present. And we've compared the rand to the Argentine peso. And... This is the result. That is the RAND's performance since July of 2016. It starts there at around, uh, uh, I think it's a, just on 1415. It's, it's a relatively flat on this scale. You'll see the peso now. 
uh, then weakens into into about three four months ago quite sharply almost touches 20 comes back a little bit now as risk on sentiment plays out across the world the dollar weakens argentine peso it was in the same place as the rand just the two to three years ago and then it all goes hopelessly wrong now the comparison between argentina and south africa on technical grounds differs. They had greater exposure to foreign debt. They were particularly exposed to when interest rates into late 2017, 2018 lifted somewhat in the United States. All those differences apply and are important. However, the bigger picture of a country living fundamentally beyond its means and being then exposed to external global shocks is something South Africa has in common with Argentina. And it's not outside the realm of possibility to consider that should global circumstances turn on South Africa now, while the risk premium in the country deepens quickly, let's say there's firm action on expropriation or something, that the currency could not go through the dramatic type of devaluation that you see in the Argentine peso. Look at that, 15 to 70 to 80. It happened in a question of three years. It's not off the charts for South Africa. We think it's important to flag that risk for you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a like. For more of our insights and analysis, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't already, sign up for our 30-day free trial, which will give you access to our exclusive client reports, briefings, as well as weekly risk alerts.